Some people think that art is just for children, but I've taught children for 35 years and they think you have to be a grown-up before you can be an artist. Mm -hmm. And we discuss that a lot of people think you have to uh, be an artist for your job before you're allowed to be an artist. And those of us in this room probably think you have to make money at being an art, at, with your art to be an artist or going full time to be an artist. I have my own definition of being an artist and I think the job of an artist is to take something ordinary like this ball of clay that I'm going to throw a pot out of in a minute. This is just ordinary dirt and water. That's all this is. But an artist will take the best of themselves, add it to this ordinary thing, and make this ordinary thing the best it can be. I have a poem to help you remember that you have what it takes to be an artist. To be an artist, I take what I think, I take what I feel, I mix it all up, and I make something real. And I know that that's a very simple poem, and in a minute I'm going to make you say it, but I want you to know that I use it every day. <laughs> I started off in the basement of my house in the trunk of my car and I use that poem every day to build on what you're visiting this morning. And I want you to know that um, the, what I'm going to talk to you about is not just for about making a pot on the wheel, but that little poem can work for anything and especially about building your business. And that's really what I want to focus on with you today. But you can be an artist if you make your best thoughts and feelings real with an ordinary pencil or paint or words or music and that's how everybody thinks about being an artist but I think you can be an artist at anything. I think you can make your best thoughts and feelings real in the way you fix your hair, fix a car, build a house, cook a meal, the way you tell a joke, the way you make a friend, the way you keep a friend, the way you build a business, the way you make somebody's day. You know when I was in fourth grade I was always the tall girl, everybody wanted me to be the basketball girl. Put an ordinary leather and air in my hand in the shape of a ball, you know what happens? It just stays ordinary. <laughs> you give that ball to somebody that loves the game, that puts their best thought and feeling into it, that ball will sail through the air, hit the hoop, make the points for the game. That player is an artist with the ball. So be thinking about what you love, thinking about um, being an artist at that, and let's say that poem together. Ready? To be an artist, I take what I think, I take what I feel, I mix it all up and make something real. Now, uh, I've been teaching long enough. Some of you are probably sparking in your brain going, why, is that that lady that came to my school when I was in third grade and I made that fish with her? <laughs> and it is. So I have these that I want to um, give you as we're talking about the definition. Take one and pass it around. Thank you, David. I'm going to start off with this uh, ball of clay. And I'm going to talk to you about making it real with my ordinary ball of clay. We're going to talk about that little poem, and I'm going to decipher it. Oh, I'm going to decipher it word at a time. The first word is take. Now, I believe that everybody has gift and talents. I uh, have met a lot of people, teaching in a lot of different situations, um, all kinds of people. And this is what I know for sure. Everybody has the desire to express themselves. The miracle is the minute we express ourselves, we all become different. And I believe that those are your gifts and talents. And so I want um, you to realize that those are gifts and talents like a birthday present. You're given a birthday present. If I give Valerie a birthday present, it's not hers until she takes it. And if you're given a gift, you've got to take it. You've got to own it. You've got to open it up. You've got to play with it. Maybe break it so you learn how to fix it. You have to take it. Then you also have to take what you think. You now I can sit here and I can make this pot. Oh. I can make this pot, but I also have to think about what I'm doing. You now when I, uh, I'm going to take this off. When I uh, teach potter's wheel to adults, and I'm going to be gender specific, you guys just bear with me. Men sit down, they stare at this process, they think about it. They get it. They understand gravity, they understand friction, they understand how the, the centrifugal force works. 
and they make pretty good pots pretty fast. Women sit down, and they just want to love this enough that it happens. <laughs> if I love this clay, it'll turn into a pot. <laughs> but the thinking is you have, to, you have to think about it. You have to want to learn about it. When we start our businesses, it all starts with a spark, right? It starts with that desire. You have that desire, and then you birth it. You birth that business. People come to this campus all the time. I want to do what you're doing. I want to build a co-op. I want to start studios. And they have that desire and that, that, you know, that excitement about it. But it's just like having a real baby. It's so exciting having this real baby. And then one day it dawns on you, oh my god, i got to parent this thing. i got to grow it. This is an 18 oh, plus commitment. I have to make, I have to be a good parent. And you have to parent your business. You have to think about it. You have to create the best thoughts for you. You know, when I was working out of the basement of my house in the trunk of my car, and then Tammy Archer, my business partner, and I bought the supply business, and I was overwhelmed. How do I do this? I thought I knew. I've been self-employed 25 years. But it grew, it popped. It, there was that momentum that we all hoped for. And then I realized I needed to learn. I needed to develop new thinking. I had to figure out what an accounts receivable was. You know, things like that. <laughs> and so I had to learn. I'm all self-taught. I did not go to college to learn how to be a potter or even a business person. But I go to the business section of the bookstore, you know, the one that's left in Hendersonville, and I, I go to the business section. I go, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read that, saw the TED talk on that, read it, read it, read it. And so I educated myself. I got my thought in order. So then you have to take what you feel. Now, we know how to feel. Artists are indulgent with their feelings. We love feeling. We love feeling angst, and we love feeling happiness. But remember, we have to take what we feel. Taking what we feel means that we own our feelings. You have to learn how to take that disappointment and turn it into confidence. You have to learn how to take that fear and turn it into bravado. You have to make those feelings. I had uh, two artists that were in the co-op, and I'm going to call them Artist Apple and Artist Orange. Artist Apple saved all year for him to be able to go full-time art. So he had a studio, he had his list, he had his timeline on the wall, he made good contacts with other artists where he was actually making piece work for those artists. He um, figured out his budget, how much clay, how many pots, what shows. And he came in and he just burned himself out. And he didn't have the feeling to balance it. You have to have both. And then I had artist, did I say orange? Thank you. Artist orange. She loved being an artist. She came in every day. She had a cup of coffee. She visited with everybody. She put her uh, fresh flowers in her studio every day. And she uh, was, you know, chatty chatty, having her coffee in the morning. But what happened? She never made any work. <laughs> and so it didn't happen. She was all feelings. Which brings me to the mix it all up. Got to have balance. You know, the, it's the feeling, it's the spark, it's the desire that brings me to the wheel. It's the thought that allows me to put my hands in the right place, to use the right amount of water, to think about what I'm going to create, the shape, what's its, what is the use going to be, how am I going to decorate it, how am I going to fire it, how am I going to sell it. Those are the thoughts. But when it gets wobbly, when it doesn't work, when the kiln melts down, it's the feeling again that brings me back to the wheel. You got to have both. You got to mix it. And notice it's mix it, it being the thoughts and feelings. Who mixes the thoughts and feelings? You do. I do. You're the mixer. So that means that you can, you can make those thoughts and feelings anything that you need. You're the one that's mixing it. All good, bad, hard. The best lessons that I got were the hardest ones, learning how to run this business, learning how to build a co-op. There were times that I thought, this is not OK. I am not having fun. I'm going to go back to my basement. It's a lot safer there. 
But I got through those things and I realized it made me a good leader, it made me smarter, it made me look for that book. And then I had success and then I had bravado and then I had, well, you can't mess with me because this, this one messed with me and I won. I made it okay. <laughs> so I'm going to keep on going. And so you have that all, you have to mix it all up. You know, I'm, I'm making this pot, this clay move up. It's called pulling up. I'm making it move up. But I want you to realize that your artwork is not yours. It was a gift. And you have to remember that your art, what you're doing, what you're creating, it goes up and out, upward, outward. You are doing more than it's just for you. You are doing it for a higher purpose. Think about Nashville. Nashville's popping. You know why Nashville's popping? Because you are. Because you're making it happen. Cities don't become creative on their own. Cities become creative because of events like this. Cities become creative because of outreach and community and togetherness and connectedness between like-minded individuals. The reason why Nashville is Nashville is because of you because you understand it's a higher purpose. It's a, you're, you're, you're moving it outward. You're, you're mixing it up so it can fall back down on everybody. So you mix it up and you make it real. Make. So I really, I, and this is opinion, but I really think that um, the job of an artist should always be constructive, not destructive. It should be building you up, not diminishing you. And I think that artists aren't just artists with their clay or their uh, paper or their pen or their words or their art. I, I think that you've got to be an artist in, the, in your relationships and the way you speak to people and the way you behave and the way you treat the planet. You're an artist in everything you do because you want to build up, because you want to create, because you want to make more. This was an empty wheel. It is now full. It was just a piece of clay. It's now a pot. It's more than it was. I could pull this pot wrong and it could fall down and my wheel would be empty again. But that doesn't mean that I was destructive. That means that it's a dead pot and it gave its life to teach me how to make the next pot better. And so that <laughs> is a way that I can create and make it a positive experience. Sometimes it's just in, your, in, in the way that you, uh, you know, your perspective, the way you frame things, the way you talk about things. You want to make something, something, something. What is it? You know, it's not just something. It's your thing. It's your thoughts and feelings. I counted up back when I was going into the school system and teaching kids. I think it's, I'm close to over 600,000 children that I taught over my 35 years of teaching kids. Our campus uh, serves over 500 artists a week through field trips and classes and events. I never saw two clay projects alike. They start off with the same instruction, the same amount of time. They had the same sample in front of them. I was the same. I've taught the same thing every single time I've taught. Every single project was different. They may be 117 fish, but they were all different clay fish. And so that's, that's the your thing. That's the something, the your thing. And you've got to make it real. Now, this is all about reality, right? We're talking about reality. Everybody, I, I actually Googled definition of reality to see what reality is. Okay, so reality, everybody has a different thought about that. Reality is what is. It is what it is. Reality is that which cannot be changed. Reality is what someone else says it is. Well, I'm going to simplify it for you. And reality is when that, that spark, that thought and feeling, that, that thing that's inside of you that's invisible, when it's in front of you, that's reality. That's real. When you make, when you take that invisible and you make it visible, when you manifest that part of you, that gift and talent that was given to you, and you manifest it, then that is when you have made it real. Now, we all know that with reality, sometimes the bills do, and sometimes the client's a little mean, and sometimes the dog knocks it over, <laughs> and sometimes it rains as you're walking around. You know, reality kind of sucks sometimes, right? But I think my definition is not just a definition of being an artist. I think my definition of being an artist is also a prescription. So I look at this and I think, all right, all right, reality. Watch this. I'm going to 
I'm going to take, take it. I'm going to own this. I'm going to control it. I'm going to take what I think. I can, you know, I believe you can learn your way out of anything. I'm going to take what I feel. I ain't scared. I still got hope. If it fails, I'll make another. I'm determined. I'm successful. And I'm going to make it real. I'm going to recover. I'm going to recover those thoughts and feelings. So being in business for yourself and being a creative is not easy because it's you. You're like an island out there in the world. Moments like this, you realize you're not an island. But I want you to realize that you're also the heart of business out there and that all waters lead to you. Businesses cannot be businesses without good printing, without good information, without collecting your people that make your best thoughts and feelings real. You know, I'm the clay lady. I love teaching. I don't really love doing the book work. I've got a wonderful business partner that keeps us in line there. I've got a wonderful general manager that keeps the people happy. You know, you learn how to reach out and network and not just be on your own. You don't have to do it all by yourself. You don't. The reality is, is that we are a community. And the reality is that although you're bringing your gift and talent out, remember, you got to make it up. You got to make it real. So I want to close by all of us getting together and saying that definition one more time. This time I want you to think about my pot, right? It was just this ordinary dirt and water. Now look at it. I can put flowers in it. I can talk in it. <laughs> There's all kinds of fun things. I could put handles on it. I could paint it. I could make my best thoughts and feelings real. It's a pot now. Where did it come from? It came from I take what I think. I take what I feel. I mix it all up and make something real. Awesome. Very well done. Okay. So let me, let me tell you my, uh, my two, my, the two things about being self-employed. You ready? Anyone who comes and says, what's your secret to being self-employed? I'll just answer that question before you even ask it. Two things. One, it's feast or famine and you don't believe either one. Just do the work. Don't believe it. And the other thing is it doesn't matter how much you make, it matters how much you spend. So keep the spending down and you can survive for a long time. Drive a paid for, a house, or a paid for a car with a paid for a house and therefore I was able to take the risk to do it. And the, because I knew I, I was a single mom raising my son who's there, Joseph, awesome. And uh, I made him my best thing I ever made right there. <laughs> Uh, but I always made sure that I could work in McDonald's and pay my bills. <laughs> that way I could have the bravado to do whatever, whatever came in front of me. Okay, so I guess we do have a little bit of time. Any questions? Questions? I guess I covered it all. I did well, yeah?